you graduated from SC, I want to say 2015? Correct. Okay. So you had one full year of just kind of focusing on U.S. volleyball, national volleyball, leading into the Olympics, right? Yes. Yes. So yeah, I had one pro season before that. Correct. Got it. So thinking back, like, you know, in the, when you're in the mix of all of this, right? When was it, when did it click to you that, oh, I, I think I'm going to try to pursue volleyball professionally, like even outside of the U S national team, like professional volleyball, when did that start to come in your thoughts, I guess, or into the mix? Okay. So we can go back to when I was about 16 years old okay. and that's when I made the choice to pursue volleyball. And I mm -hmm. said, I have some opportunities in college for basketball, some good opportunities, but am I going to be on the Olympic team for men's basketball? Mm. less likely than I am for men's volleyball. Mm. And that was a goal of mine. Watching the 2018 win, the gold medal, I was like, I want to do that. I want to mm. be those guys. So I had made that decision to pursue volleyball um, collegiately when I was about 16. Mm. Okay. And still played basketball all the way throughout mm. high school, all the way until I graduated. And then when I got to college, I started getting – more interested in professional volleyball, realizing that professional volleyball is like a viable career. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was, I didn't know much about it. I had no mm -hmm. idea. I had my, one of my assistant coaches, my volunteer assistant coaches, John Shea gave me a hard drive with copies of the club world championships of that year and the following year. And so <laughs> I end up watching these matches all the time mm -hmm. and learning about these international players. And there was no YouTube like matches really on YouTube at this time. Right. So it was like different. It was like volleybox.net. <laughs> it was like where you could find these matches, like a bunch of different, like it makes me feel quite old, <laughs> but I just started to fall in love with watching volleyball and learning and seeing all of these international players at a younger age in college. And, you know, admittedly also during class sometimes because <laughs> I was just all over it. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, maybe cut that out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but for me, it was to be able to realize that it be, it was a possibility to have, be a career. And when I got to the national team and talking to these guys and being like, Oh, uh, so that's how it works. And so, I mean, to be honest, you have to, you have to see financially, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. And so, okay, that's how much you make. That's how much um, so-and-so makes and, you know, other international players. And, oh, this can be very much uh, a feasible mm -hmm. career and not just a, a waste of time. Mm -hmm. And so learning about that, having that context um, in the professional arena was valuable for me. And then I forgot to mention after my after we won World League, I had a chance to leave and play professionally. Had a handful of offers after my junior year in college. Got it. Gosh, one of them, one of them's to the club that I'm at right now, which is which was like the pinnacle of, of international volleyball because they had some problems with a setter that couldn't get a visa cleared or something, so he couldn't play. And everybody else was signed except for me because I was still in college. Okay. And at this time, I had also received a very lucrative contract from a Turkish club as well. And I had, that was a process in deciding whether I wanted to leave and leave early, leave college early and go play professionally or stay and stay for my senior year. And that was a long process. It was a harder process, but I ended up, making my decision to stay and being saying, all right, decisions made. And I think it was a couple of days later when Zenit Kazan calls and so, and Matt Anderson calls and says, dude, we're looking for a setter. We want you. Got it. And it's going to be this much money. And I'm like, of course <laughs> I make the decision <laughs> three to four days before I hear a number like that. And it wasn't, it was like, I made up my mind. Like I've, I've committed to this. I, I've made this commitment to myself and to kind of my family and my peers at this moment. And I'm going to honor that. And so, and so like, if the timing was a little different, like <laughs> my story could be 
mm-hmm. a little different as well. But finding out volleyball is a is definitely a viable option after college, even if you're not on the national team, mm-hmm. even if you're not um, you know starting on the national team. Obviously, it helps, but to be able to play professionally and experience the world and do all things like that, um, it's it, it it's a viable option and it's also so much more accessible than than ever right now. Mm-hmm. You can watch almost every match of every league on YouTube. Yes. Which is either replays or there's different subscription services now where you can watch high level best in the world pros mm-hmm. all every weekend. And yes. that is something that I'm super excited about for the volleyball community and the youth of volleyball. Mm-hmm. And I encourage American volleyball players to watch it and just, you don't even have to study it, but just watch it and enjoy it because yeah. everybody else in the world is watching it and very aware and they're getting that up on us and we need to get it going. <laughs> yes. That's so crazy to hear, you know, how everything has kind of transpired. And like you said, it's sometimes the timing of how everything kind of lays itself out that it makes your story, you know, what your story is and you've reached a lot of success with it. Mm-hmm. 